Welcome back to Askewed Reviews. Today we have another fan request, and it is for the 1996 horror comedy, The Frighteners. For your trivia question for today, the story of The Frighteners was not originally written as a movie. What was it originally written as? The answer will be at the end of this video. In the movie, Michael J. Fox plays Frank Bannister. Frank unfortunately is involved in a car accident where his wife dies. Due to that traumatic event, he now has the ability to see ghosts. So he decides to become a bit of a con man, using the ghosts as a way to get into people's homes and get rid of them for money. During one of these house calls, Frank ends up meeting Lucy Linsky, played by Trini Alvarado. Now, Lucy seems to be a bit more of a believer in what's actually happening. Her husband Ray, however, seems not to be a believer, but a mysterious number appears on his forehead that only Frank can see. Ray is unfortunately murdered at the hands of some sort of ghostly spirit that takes on the appearance of death itself. So now, of course, it's up to Frank and Lucy and Frank's ghostly friends to try and stop this death-like creature from killing more people in the town. All the while, the local police and a quite unhinged FBI agent think that Frank is behind everything. Peter Jackson is the director of this film. He and his wife, Fran Walsh, actually wrote the screenplay for it also. Originally, the director of the film was going to be Robert Zemeckis instead of Peter Jackson, but he stayed on as just the executive producer as he saw the type of passion that Peter Jackson had for the project. Also, though, Tim Burton and Sam Raimi were also possibilities for the director of this film. Peter Jackson also does have a quick cameo in the film, as he is the punk who bumps into Frank Bannister. One of the biggest reasons they probably had trust in Peter Jackson was due to the well-received movie he had done previously called Heavenly Creatures. What's interesting is Melanie Linsky, who appears in that movie, not only has a quick cameo in Frighteners, but also that's where the last name Linsky of both Lucy and Ray comes from. Another interesting connection with Heavenly Creatures is that Danny Elfman saw that movie and liked it so much that even before knowing anything about the plot, he offered to do the music score for The Frighteners for Peter Jackson. Due to the visual effects done by Peter Jackson and more specifically his company Weta Digital, there was so much praise from what he did in this film that he was offered Lord of the Rings and King Kong because of it. Michael J. Fox was a suggestion by Robert Zemeckis that Peter Jackson absolutely loved. Now in case Michael J. Fox turned it down, other possibilities that were thought of to play Frank Bannister were Tom Cruise, Matthew Broderick, Johnny Depp, John Cusack, and even Danny DeVito. Michael J. Fox actually turned down the role of Edward Douglas in The Island of Dr. Moreau to be in the movie The Frighteners. While filming The Frighteners, Michael J. Fox realized he hated being away from his family, and The Frighteners, to this day, was his last starring role in a film, as he then moved to television to be the main character on Spin City. Michael J. Fox also had to do quite a few takes throughout this movie, as any time the judge came up, instead of shouting out, Judge! He kept saying, Doc! As in Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox also has a weird calling card for movies, as in this movie, twice, he runs through a white picket fence, and he does so also in Back to the Future and in Doc Hollywood. Jeffrey Combs actually added quite a bit to his character, Agent Milton Dammers. For instance, he suggested the Adolf Hitler haircut, that they should put spacers behind his ears to make them poke out further, and even added some of the ideas to some of the tattoos and scarification that was on his chest. Now, the actual film company is the one who suggested the black eye contacts. Apparently, Joe Montaigne was the only other actor who was possibly up for the role of Dammers. Charles Starkweather is an actual murderer. Now, he is mentioned in this film as a reference for the character of Johnny Bartlett trying to beat his body count. Now, what's interesting is they took the character Johnny Bartlett's last name from two of the victims of Charles Starkweather. They chose Dee Wallace to play the character of Patricia Bradley due to the fact that she was able to play such a wholesome mother in E.T., and they wanted the character to come off as being someone who could be so nice and sweet when there's so much darkness underneath. John Astin actually has quite a bit of experience playing a creepy character. So he plays the judge in this film, but he is also much more well known as Gomez Adams from the original Adams Family television series. What's funny is the Drill Sergeant Ghost was originally written to be a reference to the actual actor Arlie Ermey. 
Now, they couldn't find any actors that could do that character, so they ended up just asking Arlie Ermey, and he agreed to the role. Also, I'm not sure which one it is, but one of these flying babies is actually the child of Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson was hoping to release this movie in October, right around the time for Halloween. Unfortunately, Universal Studios decided it should be a summer release, so it ended up going up against Independence Day and the 1996 Summer Olympics. So this is the big reason why they believe it kind of flopped when it first came out. Here are two things you may not have noticed in the film. Number one, and I still find this very confusing, why in the world did Frank think it was a good idea to take Lucy to Excalibur's Restaurant, which is a themed restaurant where people dress up in medieval garb, to talk about her dead husband? Number two, and this was a little bit hidden, but if you notice, one of the cereal options that Frank has is Boo Berry, which is kind of funny since this movie is about ghosts. The Frighteners is such a fun movie that I definitely recommend watching. The visuals, especially the ghosts, are amazing. My only issue with it are some of the choices that the characters make throughout the film are very confusing and don't make much sense to me. But I did enjoy it, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Now, as for the trivia question from the beginning of the episode, the story of the Frighteners was not originally written as a movie. What was it originally written as? The original story was written as an episode for Tales from the Crypt, but they liked it so much they decided to change it into a feature film instead. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews. If there is a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments. And as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe.